is an HIV Diaries special presentation. Now, I'm just not understanding why they still haven't showed you it if they're saying it exists. They're saying it exists. They're Someone saying has made an error. There's liability there. Mm-hmm. And so they have circled the wagon to not allow the information out that error has been made. And if you continue to press against that, my prediction is that they'll come after you harder. They'll come after you harder. Peace. I hate the word. As I hate hell, all Montagues. And the. The doctor is in. That's right, the doctor is in for the final part. In the uh, continuing series we're doing, we're looking back on old shows, looking back on old topics and playing clips from those shows or playing the full shows for that matter. And then afterwards, reflecting, for example, talked about the whole thing about making the transition from video to audio, because when this program first started, it was a video blog. Some people don't remember that. Some people weren't there for the beginning. That's all right, too. But either way, you know, you're here now and I'm okay with that. But then in part two, we reflected back at a time when the doctors and the medical people that were involved were attempting to um, get me undetectable. You still live with the virus, but you are undetectable in that it's basically put into remission. And that's a nice thing to have because, you know, when I got diagnosed originally back in June of 2017, I remember being so incredibly nervous like oh my god I thought it was over I thought it was the end and did not realize how much had changed medically had no idea then I got diagnosed and all that and had to go to a clinic and when I went I was given an option the option I was given was I could go to one hospital in Toledo here called Mercy or I could go to another one called the University of Toledo Medical Center and they had a Ryan White clinic inside And here was my philosophy on why I chose to go to UTMC Ryan White. My philosophy was that in the event that there is one day a cure or something along those lines, that more than likely the university hospital, because it's a learning hospital and testing hospital to a certain degree, that they would more than likely be one of the first to get it. That was how I approached it. And as you saw in part two, there was some complications They did eventually get me undetectable, and I had a really good relationship with the University of Toledo Medical Center, Ryan White Clinic. Everybody involved, Joan Duggan, Gina Jakeway, David Bingham, Daniel Warren, all those people, they were all great. And then things changed, and I didn't know why. I was kind of kept in the dark, you know, and that should have been the first sign. That really should have been the very first sign that something was wrong, but I didn't really know what was going on. Come to find out the person who was taking care of me at the time claimed that I had done something and a decision was made without consulting me, without talking to me. I didn't even find out about this particular situation until much later on when the state of Ohio got involved. And so a decision was made to give me another doctor. And the doctor that they gave me was a guy by the name of Dr. Michael Ellis. And things did not get off to a good start anyway. He always seemed like he was really uncomfortable. It was very strange. He just kind of had to be there. You know, it was one of those you had to be there deals. So I have Michael Ellis. And around the same time, things start to shift in a lot of different areas as well. A lot of things started to come unraveled in a lot of areas of my life, my personal life, private life, medical life. And there was a lot of stuff, you know, stuff. March of 2019, suddenly there's this um, doctor's note that doesn't exist. And I could prove it literally because I had the information in my car. So I have a meeting with somebody about it. And we sit down and this person starts explaining everything to me and they pull out this paperwork I've never seen before. Where did you get this? Oh, well, they faxed this over. They did. Never told me about it. So then I go to the UTMC Ryan White Clinic, my caseworker, Gina Jakeway, and I explain the whole thing. And she's like, all right, let me take a look at it. And then Gina Jakeway stops returning my phone calls. 
And so then I show up at the clinic because my whole thing is, look, um, we have fraud here and you don't seem to be the least bit bothered by it. Well, now she's not coming out to visit me. So I said, okay, I'm coming back and I'm not going to leave when I come back until I see her. Well, well, what do you mean? I'm going to sit out in that lobby out by the snack machine where there's tables and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to eat my lunch and I'm not going to leave until I see her. I'll see you in 20 minutes. That's where I'll be. And I did. And I went out, grabbed some takeout, came back, sat and had my lunch and I didn't leave. Half hour passed, one hour passed, two hours passed. It got to be about two and a half, three hours later. And finally she shows up and I said, Gina, what's going on? It was like the air had just been taken out of the room and she's very quiet and she's very kind of reserved, I guess, to a certain degree. And she says, "Um, look, you're just going to have to go along with this. And I said, there's fraud. Give me a new note or else. And I walk out because at this point I was pissed. You're okay with fraud. How dare you? The next thing that happens is now she's doing everything she can to make this go away. And she's now involving my psychologist, David Bingham. And we start talking, basically saying that I was doing a good thing by standing up to these people. Right. And at one point referring to, one of the people that was involved because one of the people that was involved in orchestrating this fake doctor's note story was a former HIV care case manager and referring to this person as somebody with half-baked knowledge. Suddenly, David Bingham's attitude changes. Now he wants me to just go along with this fraud. And I got all of this on tape. So I was sitting on a lot more than what they were giving me credit for. And I was more aware of what was going on around me than what anybody realized. You know, I just had enough and I had had my rights violated. Because contrary to what some may think, and I want to make this clear, this had nothing to do with administration of medication. And it had nothing to do with, quote, staying compliant, as I've heard it referred to in some circles. This was a personal attack on me. You don't commit fraud and make up stories about doctor's notes that don't exist without it not being personal. You don't attack their medical care like that if it's not personal. And I left the clinic and when you know it, suddenly now the people at the clinic are trying to call me. They wouldn't return my calls no more than the man in the moon. Now they're trying to call me back. And now they're calling totally unprovoked, sometimes two, three times a day. It's pretty wild. They finally gave up. And then signed off on the paperwork for me to leave. And, uh, <clears throat> and then I left and I reported him. And then it got to be, I got another piece of information that my case manager, Gina Jakeway, wasn't covered under HIPAA. So these people at the clinic were allowing a woman who wasn't protected by health laws to take care of my medical interests. And I didn't know it. So I'm like, how dare you look out for people and their health and their well-being and lie to them? Not just lie to me, but lie to everybody else who you're taking care of. They don't know this is going on underneath their nose. And you're lying to everybody who comes into that clinic to get care. How dare you, you evil people? You know, shame on Joan Duggan for allowing this. And so I did a series of programs talking about the University of Toledo Medical Center, Ryan White Clinic. And I did some bits, and I did some comedy routines, did all kinds of things. It reached a point where I was building to a live broadcast. And here was my mentality, fine. They don't want to admit that I'm right. If you're not going to come to me, I'm going to come to you. And in early 2020, literally right before COVID quarantine hit, I went live from their parking lot in front of the clinic. (laughs) I had some balls on me, didn't I? And I called her out and I waited. She never came out. She never showed. And that very well could have been the end of it. Could have been the end of it. And a few weeks later, something very uh, strange happened. I got a break in my case and I got the puzzle piece that I needed to finally put everything together. And it told me everything I needed to know. And I was left with literally no other choice but to report what had happened. And then I want to say a couple weeks later, COVID hit and everything got shut down. 
So I get this letter in the mail stating that the case had been closed again. Blow. I'm like, ah, dang it. Ah, shit. You know, so I'm holding this in my hand and I'm just, I'm like, man, I can't believe this. I can't. It's clear. So I go and get in my car and my phone rings and it's a number I don't recognize from a state that I know no one in, by the way. And it's an investigator, an independent investigator, hired on behalf of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services about my case. And we had a really good discussion. They said, well, what happened here? Blah, blah, blah. So then I explained the whole thing. And I even did research on the person because I had been lied to and misled so much. I had to do research on the individual. So I kind of bought some time so I could look him up and very prominent individual. So I was more than obliged to speak with this person. And I explained the whole thing. And my case got reopened because of this personal attack on Facebook. So then my case not only got reopened, but my medical paperwork got a second look. So this paperwork that all of this information was based around was signed by my then doctor about doctor's visits that never happened. And it was discovered that, holy smokes, turns out there was a violation of privacy that did take place. And on April 24th, 2020, finally, we have it on paper that my privacy was indeed violated. And I can prove as well that the paperwork, fraudulent. I was right. You know, I've come to the realization that nothing will ever change what happened. Nothing will ever turn the clock back. March 2019 was when the fake doctor's note story showed up and my life was turned upside down and those who were involved in what happened to me blew up my medical care. It took just over a year to finally get answers on paper as to what happened, but I hung in there and I never let down. And I don't let down, especially when I know I'm right. I don't let down. I'm an asshole when I know I'm right. And people can say what they want about that, but look, sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get answers and you can't be afraid. You just can't be afraid. You have to stay determined. You have to stay on point. Do not let down. When you attack someone's medical care and you attack someone's counseling, how do you expect it to be taken anything other than personally? I don't trust anybody to take care of my medical care anymore. Yeah, I've got a doctor and he hasn't done anything wrong by me, but I don't trust him. I don't. I constantly have one eye looking in the back of my head when I walk in his office because of what happened. I don't trust anybody to take care of me medically anymore because of this. This is what I lived through, and then people couldn't understand why I was so screwed up in the head. Gee, I wonder why. Damage has been done. But that doesn't mean that something can't be done to see to it that something like this doesn't happen again. He has no business practicing medicine. I don't care how good he is. And um, I've made the decision I'm going to pursue something against him. I don't know what yet, but I'm, I'm going to. Because now that I can prove that something happened, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to. This man needs to be stopped. His license needs to be revoked. And that clinic needs to be shut down too. And see to it that this never happens again to anybody else. It's sick, isn't it? So thank you so much for joining us for the Reflection Series. We really, really do appreciate it. Sometimes we reflect back with a little bit of a different philosophy. We reflect back with a little bit of a different attitude. Sometimes we look back and reflect and say we're going to do legal action. <laughs> but we we reflect. And, you know, time does change people and time does change things. And ultimately, with the Ryan White case, you know, I still have to live my life. I still have to proceed. And, you know, a lot of things are happening out in the world right now. And who's to say from one day to the next, what's going to happen? None of us know, you know, none of us really have an idea. But what I will say is this, nothing is guaranteed in life. Nothing is for certain. But if you embrace it while you can and live it out and live your life like every day is going to be your last, you might be surprised what happens. Hi, you've reached Danielle Warren, nurse practitioner with infectious disease. If you're unable to get through to me, and I'm not returning your call within the hour, you can call Mary Bowles at 419-3-4. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. <laughs> oh, such a great motto to live by. So, uh, this is... 
It's about 5 a.m. here, uh, Sunday, June 9th. I know you're probably thinking to yourself, holy shit, that's a name and a voice I haven't seen or heard from in quite some time. Yeah, probably a good reason for that. But uh, I'm sure you've gotten wind of some of the things that have been going on lately. And I, I want to just, uh, it, you know, long story, I'm not going to get into the whole thing here. It'll just take too damn long. But what I am going to say is this, and um, you know, I, I've thought long and hard about this, and I wanted to call you and leave you personally a voicemail. And, you know, it would be really unfair if I were to leave UTMC and to leave that clinic, if I didn't take the time to call and thank you for what you did for me, putting aside my issues with Gina and putting aside everything else that's happened with Dr. Ellis and everything else. There was a time in my life where I know I bugged the shit out of you. <laughs> I know I did. And I don't even need to think about it. But you took my calls, you listened to my concerns, and you answered them. And you were cool about it, you know? Which I appreciated, because I really needed that at that time. And of course, the whole thing went down with you no longer being my doctor and having to go to Ellis, which, uh, whatever. Um, but in the overall scheme of things, I just wanted to call and personally thank you for everything you did for me to basically help bring you back to life. I mean, you know, I went from... <laughs> I went from looking like, you know, a stick figure to now I look like I know where all the good buffets are. <laughs> I'm, I'm like not even kidding about that, you know, which I, you know, I, I, I guess that's a good thing in a way compared to where I was. So, um, I miss being skinny though, but that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. Point being, I just wanted to call and say thank you for everything you did for me. And maybe some time down the way, whether it be wherever I end up or maybe for that matter if I end up back at UTMC because I've learned in life to never say never. You never know what might happen. But I just wanted to say thank you for everything you did for me, for my health, for uh, listening to me when nobody else would, and for what you do. You know, what you do is a really noble thing. It really, truly is. And, you know, I miss that compassion that I got from you. I didn't get that from anybody else after you. I really didn't. And I'm just being honest. I didn't. But I think it would be in everybody's best interest if, uh, you know, I... Um, Explore my options elsewhere. Like I said, maybe one day I'll find my way back there. You know, I always did like coming out there. I always enjoyed it. I always looked forward to it. But uh, these last few months have just not been good. And I'm sure everybody has their own spin on things and everybody has their own side of things. All I'm going to say, Danielle, point blank, conflicts of interest will kill your business every time. And when you mislead people for so long, you possibly expect that to turn out good. So I wish you the best. And um, hopefully we'll uh, we'll cross paths again sometime soon. You take care. God bless. And uh, see you down the line.